There was a question that came up on the MX6 forums about the PCV system, so I figured I'd just take a couple minutes and quickly go over the PCV system, just for the beginners out there who have no idea what the PCV system does, how it operates, and why it's important. This is your PCV valve. This is the only working part in your entire PCV system. This is the only moving part, and it's just a, uh, a weight inside of here that goes up and down. This is a check valve. And one way to check if your PCV valve is operating correctly is just to shake it. As long as that weight goes up and down, then your PCV valve is working correctly. Also, blow in through one end and out the other, and then blow in through the other end and try and blow out the other. It should only blow one way. This is a one-way check valve. You should only be able to blow through going in this direction. This is your PCV valve right here. It sits like so, on the four-cylinder anyway. Now, on the V6, the PCV valve is also found on top of the valve cover. The breather hose for the V6 comes out of the front port of the valve cover along with the metal tube that traverses the length of the valve cover. And in later models of the V6, KLDE or KLG4, I'm not exactly sure which one, they completely did away with that PCV breather hose or pipe from the front valve cover. And there's only a PCV valve on the front. On the I-4, we only have one PCV valve. It's right there, really easy to see. On the back of the PCV valve, it connects to these two hoses. It splits off into two directions. One goes into the engine right here and one goes into the engine right there. The blow-by gases from the combustion cylinders basically fill up the crankcase with positive pressure. And that pressure is vented through the valve cover, basically a, a hose that redirects the blow-by gases back into the intake manifold right here at the engine, right where the intake manifold meets up with the engine. There's two holes there. So it gets distributed into the cylinders. The cylinder banks have two ports, two major ports right there. The only thing holding back the combustion gas from then exploding and going back into your block is the piston ring. So the piston rings play a vital role in your PCV system. All of the blow-by gases, and it's a very minute amount of blow-by gas, piston rings are very tight and they're cylinder bores. We're talking an order of thousandths of an inch of blow-by gas around the rings. So any gas that does escape the combustion cylinder through the piston rings and goes into your crankcase or your block has to be vented somehow because if you keep putting pressure into that you'll you'll end up blowing up your engine uh, you will blow out seals you will damage your engine if your engine cannot vent um, crankcase pressure PCV system was invented as a way to release that crankcase pressure there was a a predecessor to the modern day PCV system which was basically a tube um, that vented PCV gases out into the atmosphere. Prior to the 1960s when the US government mandated that the PCV system had to be rerouted into the intake, the predecessor to that system was basically, it was a down tube that was routed, a very long tube that was routed down underneath of the car that expelled exhaust gases into the atmosphere as you're driving along and it gets sucked underneath of the car. Later, someone came up with the great idea to just reroute it back into the intake and have it reburned. You might be familiar with those tiny little filters that you see that are right here that people put on them. That basically does the same thing as the old PCV system. So anyone that has a filter that's right here and does not have this hose that goes into the intake, you're basically taking your entire system back to pre-1960 technology. You will also fail emissions if you do not have this routed back in here because you're supposed to technically you're breaking the law. All blow-by gases, hydrocarbons, have to be reburned into uh, the engine. And it's very similar in the way that your EGR system works. EGR reroutes a portion of the gas back into your intake manifold to be reburned. I think it's probably a better idea to show you how the PCV gases are routed than just to try and explain it. Here are some old screenshots from when I did the head rebuild and uh, also when I did my valve club cleaning. Here's an image that shows the backside of the head and where gases go from the block through the head and then directly into the valve cover. Um, Blow-by gases that go through the piston rings and into the crankcase are then directly routed through the head 
and directly into the breather hose baffle. The breather hose baffle is separate from the PCV valve baffle. The PCV valve only ventilates gases from within inside the head. It does not vent gases that get into the crankcase. The breather hose is to ventilate crankcase gases and the PCV valve is to ventilate gases that accumulate in the head. Technically, those two gases should not should never be mixed. They they shouldn't be mixed unless the seal on your baffles goes bad. And it's it's possible. Uh, it's just basically RTV that seals the the baffles together. And I'll show you a picture of when I was redoing the valve cover baffles, air baffles that you have to put new sealant on if you remove those the screws from the baffles and you take that off. Um, but those should be sealed. And the two gases, from, the gases from the crankcase should never mix with the gases from the head. So I guess, I guess you could call the PCV valve a head gas ventilation valve. Whereas the breather hose is a crankcase ventilation hose. And if that makes more sense. They're, they're actually two separate gas ventilating routes. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of how those gases are routed because without ever taking apart the valve cover or the head you would never have, you would not know that you wouldn't be able to gain the experience and the knowledge of seeing what I've seen hopefully that translates over in in my explanations so that you now have the same knowledge that I do without ever having to take your head apart <laughs> and learn it like I did um now I didn't, obviously I didn't just take everything apart just to do it, you know, that was part of a head rebuild, a partial engine rebuild process. If, if I would have never done that head rebuild, I would have never known about how those baffles are designed and I wouldn't be able to show you either. I'd have to search around the internet for some of those pictures. And there's not a lot of people that do um, engine rebuilds and document it the way that a lot of members on the Mazda 626 site document it. Uh, people are pretty good there about taking a lot of pictures and doing a lot of visual learning and I am definitely a visual learner. So without actually getting your hands on it, hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of at least how the gases are routed and why. <laughs> uh, it's always nice to know how and why. One thing that you should do periodically is remove this hose and take a look at the end of the hose and see if you see a whole bunch of oil. If you see a whole bunch of oil and gunked up crud and crap, you need to clean out your hose and then inspect your oil quality. Routine oil changes play a major part in the PCV system. If this gets clogged up with oil, sludge, and it doesn't move, you can damage parts of your engine if this hose is clogged up. This hose goes into baffles. This, this whole section right here is a baffle, an air baffle. The gas is inside of the head where your camshaft, or in this case I have two camshafts, dual overhead cam, where your camshafts ride, and the camshafts churn up the oil, and there are oil squirters involved with some systems, ways that oil is distributed, but basically it churns it up. All of the, the oil mist will get accumulated and then dumped back out in here. The PCV valve requires oil mist to keep this valve lubricated. Now, if there's too much oil in the mist, that can help to gunk it up and clog it up. If there's not enough, you might have a, uh, a valve cover leak where it's, it's leaking out. That's why you need to have a good valve cover seal so that your PCV system works as intended. One more tip while I'm just thinking about it. The PCV system obviously deals with blow-by gases and since there's gasoline in the combustion, when the gasoline gets into the crankcase, there's a lot of friction happening in the crankcase and that can be dangerous if you have a rich condition. The key here is that you want to avoid ever having a really super rich condition because that blow-by gas is going to be super rich and unburned. There's going to be fuel vapor getting into the crankcase. The PCV system also helps in the event of a rich condition, super rich condition, try and reburn that. In some ways, if you put more fuel mixture back into the intake manifold during a super rich condition, you're just adding more fuel to that and your engine is going to run like crap. Uh, it's just going to 
go downhill. You might end up getting misfires. Loss of compression, if you have bad piston rings, loss of compression might be one of those symptoms. So if you see your, uh, your breather hoses or your PCV valves are really gunked up with either fuel or you can smell fuel, or they're really gunked up with oil. Those are just symptoms. Those are symptoms of a poorly running engine, a, an inefficient engine, and you would want to figure out why that is. So those are just some of the symptoms to look for, and it's really easy to check your PCV valve, and it's really easy to check your breather hose. Literally take you one minute to check both of those. So just as a uh, preventative maintenance and routine maintenance item, check your PCV system. Just to summarize, your PCV valve sends blow-by gases back into the intake manifold here, and a breather hose back into your intake which shoots it into the intake manifold there. There's two locations for the PCV system to get uh, blow-by gases back into the intake manifold. And that's just on this system. I'm only really familiar with the 626 and the FS engine and the, and the KL engine. Every system is unique, every system is different, but that's just how it works on, on mine. And generally the principle is going to be the same for just about any engine because after the 1960s I think they mandated that you had to have some type of PCV system and that you were not venting blow-by gases out into the atmosphere. That's why you shouldn't have one of those little breather things right here. You should always have your hose hooked up. So I hope you learned a little bit about the PCV system, how it works, how to diagnose a bad PCV valve, and if you have any questions, comments, if you enjoy the video, click like, subscribe, all that jazz. Cool.